Hi everybody, this is Cynthia Kane, and welcome back to our second video tutorial for EG 102 Session 2, and this one is going to give you some help with selecting a multimodality for your multimodal project that you're doing for Composition 2. Now what you have in front of you is a bibliography that I'm also going to make sure that your instructors have uh, to supply to you through Canvas as well. This is a bibliography that we put together through the library just to give you a very quick overview of freely available programs that you can do at home to create your multimodal project. And this is not comprehensive as you can see, but at least <clears throat> it's a pretty good overview of what we have available to you that is totally free to use. So depending on what you would want to do, you might want to create a presentation for your multimodal project Please check with your instructor first, though, because your instructor may well want you to use something other than Microsoft PowerPoint if you decide that you want to create a presentation. So Prezi at Prezi.com is a way of creating an interactive presentation, and I'm going to show you in just a little bit how that works. If you'd like to create a flyer <coughs> or a handout or a brochure, Microsoft Word and Microsoft Publisher will allow you to do that. Um, Google Docs can do that to a certain extent as well. So you may already have Microsoft Word or Microsoft Publisher available to you on your own computer. However, Canva and Pictochart, our next ones, will let you create an infographic, again, that's a little bit more of a visually appealing way of, uh, <coughs> of conveying information to your audience. Canva and Pictochart also have uh, templates, though, that would let you create a flyer or a handout. So you could use those as alternatives as well. If you'd like to create a video or an audio presentation very similar to what I'm doing right now, Zoom is available as a free basic account. And I'll show you how that works as well. And finally, if you'd like to create a website or a blog or a similar web presence, Wix and Weebly, again, you may have already used these particular programs, will let you create very quick and very visually appealing websites using a lot of templates that are already freely available to you. So let's start taking a look at some of these programs. And we'll go ahead and start with Prezi. Now, Prezi is like PowerPoint, except it's a very interactive way of doing a presentation. And there are different ways that you can log into Prezi as well as all of these other free programs. If I click on login, I can actually create my own account and you may want to do that. <clears throat> you could also log in with Facebook if you have a Facebook account. Or if you click on login with Google, you can log in with your g.emporia.edu account. And I can log in with my own account as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Now, when you do this, you may get another screen right before this <clears throat> that will ask you um, if what your role is. So you would indicate that you are a student and that you just want to use a very free basic Prezi account. You don't necessarily need to upgrade and you certainly would not need to upgrade and pay anything for this project for Composition 2. There's one here that says getting started and that can give you a very good overview of how Prezi works. And you can also go over here and say, you're ready to create your first presentation. We're gonna create this with a template. And there are a lot of different templates that I could choose from. So depending on what might appeal to me, I could go to, let's go to this one, strategic planning. And I say that I do want to use this template. And I can call this whatever I would want to call it. I could call it uh, the title of the topic that I'm working on. So this one might be art therapy and mandalas. I also work with art therapy students and this is something that they do use in terms of their classes. You will want to share this with anyone on the web. The reason is that if you choose people I share it with, you can only do that with a pro account that you would need to pay for. And from this point, there's a lot of different things that you can do. You can start clicking on these links and adding different points that would relate to your topic. 
You can change the background if you want it. You can change your title here. And this will be a very interactive thing. You can keep adding different slides. And you see what happened here when I clicked on this, I could update my information here, put in maybe different subtopics here. And I can keep adding different things. If I go back to overview, it's not gonna zoom in on that second bullet point or that second point of opportunities. So you see how this is a little bit more interactive than just a regular PowerPoint presentation. And then when you get ready to save and share it, you can click here and you can actually create a link, a web link that you would send to your instructor and then your instructor could view your Prezi presentation. So that's just a very quick overview of the way Prezi works. Let's go ahead and go now to Zoom. Now Zoom at zoom.us, again, is a way that you can create a quick video that could be uploaded to YouTube. When you go over here to sign in, <clears throat> this is where you could go ahead and create an account. And then from this point, Zoom will let you record a video to your computer. Then it's saved as an MP4 file that you could then upload to YouTube uh, using a Creator Studio account. If you signed into YouTube with your g.emporia.edu account, then you could actually go ahead and upload your video from Zoom at that point. We'd be very happy to help you if this is something you would like to experiment with. PictoChart and Canva are our next options. Again, if I click on login or sign up, I could log in with Google. You notice that most of these are giving me this option to log in with my emporia.edu or g.emporia.edu account. This is actually something I created already down here and I'll show you this very quickly on what this looks like. I did this and you can see that I probably need to add a little bit more to this because it's talking a little bit more about information. But this is where I could actually click, if I went here to edit, and I could edit my template that I've chosen through PictoChart. But if I went back over here to Infographics, this is where I can click a lot of different free templates to add. And the thing about Infographics is that you can modify these to your heart's content. You can put in the title of your uh, topic, pick out facts that you would like to convey in your infographic, the great thing about this too is, if I go back over here to my dashboard, and usually there's a dashboard in these programs that will save what you've created so far. Let's go back to edit. <clears throat> and here, <clears throat> I can change different shapes and icons. I can add photos that are freely available through PictoChart, or I could add my own photo. If I wanted to add a photo of myself or a photo of something that I took from my computer, just again, to make this look a little bit more visually appealing. So there's a lot of different things that you can do. You can change your background, you can change your text, you can change the color scheme, just a lot of different things that you can do. This will save this automatically. You can change the title of this infographic to again, the title uh, that would reflect the topic that you're doing for your multimodality. You can always preview this. And then when you click on download, you actually will download this as a PNG file. This will be with a free basic account. <clears throat> and then your PNG file will be saved to your computer. And then you could submit that on your Canvas course to your instructor as a PNG file that they could go ahead and they could preview as well. Canva works in a very similar fashion. The only big difference between Canva and PictoChart is that each one will have different types of graphics and different types of templates for infographics. So one is not necessarily better than the other. We'll go to Google. And again, I could sign in with my emporia.edu, or you can sign in with your g.emporia.edu account. Uh, we're really not gonna do this right now, so let's close this. And let's see, let me get back over here. And let's go back to Canva. And now I'm back in and I'm to my account. 
And again, this is where I can go to templates. Remember I mentioned that Canva and PictoChart will let you do a poster or a flyer, as well as different things such as an infographic. There's posters, logos, presentations, flyers, cards, there are infographics. Again, you can click on any of these templates will be, that will be free and you can modify those. And you can again save this as a PNG file and then send that file to your instructor. Wix and Weebly are both, again, freely available website programs. I've already authenticated myself here on Wix uh, with my Google account. And this is actually my annual evaluation portfolio that I set up as um, a Wix program, basically as a Wix website that I submitted for my annual evaluation. And you can go back over here just to Wix itself. And if I go here to Weebly, Weebly is going to be the same way. So Wix and Weebly, I'm gonna go ahead and log in here to Weebly. It's saying, welcome back. It's seen me before. And Wix and Weebly will let you go ahead and design a website. And you're not really going to be choosing a domain name at this point, but this is where you could build a website, again, with titles, text, images, galleries, and so forth, and then make that freely available. I'm gonna go back here to Wix for just a second, because as I said, this actually will let you do the same thing. And I'm gonna go ahead and log out here. which I'll just go ahead and click on this. And I'm gonna go ahead and go into the one that I already created. And we'll let that load. And you can always go back to Wix and Weebly and you can edit a site that you have already created. So this may be taking us a little bit longer to load than we would want, there it is. So this is one again that I've already created for my annual evaluation portfolio. I can add different pages here. I can edit, I can change a background. If I click on a text box in a Wix site or in Weebly, this will actually let me change my text. I can change the fonts. I can change a lot of different things here. The plus sign over here for Wix, and Weebly works the same way, will let you add different images or different shapes. And again, as we saw with Canva and with PictoChart, you can actually upload images from those programs or you can upload photos from your own computer. Again, just depending upon the multimodal project that we would want you to do. I'm also gonna be sharing this with your instructor. Um, this is a research guide that one of my colleagues uh, created that gives a little bit more detail about how to start your own website with Wix or with Weebly. And if you are interested in doing this in terms of a website, I would highly encourage you to go to this research guide and look at some of these guides that both Wix, there's a lot of different tutorials on here, and Weebly would offer as well. Again, this is the address for this research guide, but I will also make sure that your instructors have that so that that can be embedded into your campus courses and you can go to that directly as well.